I watched a lot of domestic violence in the home. Seeing a woman get, you know, beat was normal to me. David Peden grew up surrounded by chaos. His divorced parents had their own struggles and were unable to care for him and his four brothers, leaving them to fend for themselves in Nashville, Tennessee. Watching my dad, you know, fall into alcoholism and then my mom fleeing from an abusive relationship really left me in a place of, of, of just being angry. You know, why doesn't he have the courage to overcome alcohol? How come he keeps choosing the bottle over us? Why does she keep choosing men and those men being men that aren't good to her? And, you know, the result of like her choices and his choices have left us in this broken and abandoned state. Really, you know, I was angry at them. I was angry at the hand I was dealt in life, and that kind of just fueled everything I did from then. I went to the streets looking for love and belonging that I felt I should have had in my home. I was openly embraced, you know, by people who said they would die for me. At 13, David joined a gang and found his new family on the streets. One night, a fight with a rival gang turned deadly. When one of his friends was shot, and died in his arms. That night changed me forever because then we went from, you know, just fighting to now we're fighting with guns. I just went on a mission to say, you know what, like, people who killed him, I'm going to do everything I can to try to kill them. And that really led me down a path of drugs and alcohol like never before. David fueled his hate and anger with hardcore drug use, taking him further into darkness. Heroin brought me to a place where I'd do anything to have it. I started robbing. I started kicking in doors. I started, you know, just anything, stealing from, you know, friends. There was no limits to what I would do, really. At this time of my life, I was 23 years old. I already had one daughter, had another daughter on the way. And yet I have them living in the same life that I resented my parents for, you know. I felt like a deadbeat, a failure. I didn't feel like a man at all, you know, I felt like a like a boy who couldn't stop living as a boy. Held captive by his addiction, David faced a critical decision in a motel with his pregnant girlfriend and child. I know I got enough money for the room the next day, or I got enough money to call the drug dealer and get some drugs. I picked up the phone and I called the drug dealer and was in tears the whole time that I called the drug dealer. I realized just how weak I was. I knew the, the right decision, but I couldn't make it. I knew I loved them, but I was painfully aware that I loved the drugs more. And so I broke down and hit my knees and started crying out to God in desperation. God, if you're real, I need you to come down here and, and change me. I felt like years, like decades of pain were like, just came off of me. Like I gave all that pain, all of that sorrow, all of that abandonment to like God and was like, this is all I have. Like. I can't do anything with this, but if you can, if you're really real, like I'm I'm willing to, to let you take control of my life, you know? There was an overwhelming peace that, you know, came into the room where God just kind of assured me, like, I'm here with you, like my hand is on your life. God quickly answered his prayer with an arrest for his previous crimes. Removed from the drugs, David started pursuing a new life in jail. I just opened up the Bible and was like, God, show me who you are. And so I started praying and I started reading the word. I started writing. I started, you know, just meditating on scriptures that, that I would read. And the word began to come alive to me. Everything about me started changing. I didn't, I, I didn't want the things that I would normally want, worldly things. I, I would like crave like godly character. While in jail, God began using David in powerful ways. I started Bible studies in jail just started lifting prayers up with a bunch of inmates and we were watching God answer prayers. Some people were going home that we prayed to go home. People were healed at home. Being able to share and communicate the word like that was, I realized, wow, God has like gifted me for this. After serving 13 months of his sentence, David was already a free man when he walked out of jail. I got out and immediately got plugged into a local church and started serving, started connecting myself with the local body of Christ. Um, but at the same time saying, God, like, however you want to use my life, like I'm here. More and more people started asking me if I wanted to share my testimony or come and preach or teach or do a Bible study. And so slowly my ministry started like growing and God started developing me more in public ministry. 
Today, God has blessed David with a family. The ministry he started in jail, he now enjoys as pastor of a local church. I think about when I joined the gang, you know, I'm looking for family, I'm looking for belonging, I'm looking for a place that I was accepted. But in our reality, it was all false love. But in belonging to Christ and belonging with his family, I, I truly have found, you know, my brothers, sisters, spiritual mothers, spiritual fathers that will walk through fire with me. When life gets hard now, um, I know where to run to. Um, and I have real weapons that help me fight, that actually move me forward in life instead of weapons that I use to really just destroy myself. He's my everything. My deliverer, my healer, my hope, my safety, my refuge, my stability, my strength. Like, he's my everything.